Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. I am on my way to go do a little... Uh, urban exploration, I guess. Well, I don't know if it's considered that because I've been invited to a house that was uh, formerly owned by a um, eccentric person and it is a uh, bit of a hoard. So we're gonna do a little uh, looking around, see if we can find some treasures and uh, see if we can dig our way around the house. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, in the first room and there are just piles of dishes and glassware, I'm afraid. I gotta find a place to put my foot. There's some paintings. Not, it's a back glass painted, kind of amateur, but kind of a funky 1950s looking uh, shot set, like a little bar set. You can flip that around and fill up your drinks. I'll see if there's anything unique. Sometimes, I don't deal a lot in China teacups has really tight fit in here but there are the occasional things that do have value this is all crystal that's for putting flowers in but there's a lot of glassware oh i shouldn't say it's all crystal in fact i don't think any of that's crystal that's just like cut glass and glassware ornaments let's see what's in this case teacups well i do buy teacups it's all about the shop some of these little individual sets can be kind of nice. Royal Albert. The dining room table, there is a dining room table underneath all this and it's just completely packed. But if you look underneath, the placemats are still there. The doily is still on the table and just sort of the, the clutter has been added to it. But uh, there are some neat pieces. I think I see some depression glass in that cabinet. So I'm gonna fill up a little box and uh, see if I can't find a few things to buy. I'm just looking in the case there and I see that cute little, it's like a nesting bird. The little blue, uh, probably like a little gravy bowl. And then uh, this would be like depression glass or carnival glass. Mm -hmm. I don't see much for uranium, but there are collectors for those. Yep. And I'm gonna try and reach in very gingerly. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Set that there, just cause I don't wanna knock this over. I don't have much room to work with, but. That's just a fun little piece. I think that's just a cute little bird. You've been cleaning. I can see there's parts you haven't gotten to yet. Well, I, I'm back to plan A. I've got to get access to the bathroom and the fridge. Right. So I'm just doing that and I, I won't hop over stuff to fix it. But no, you got to... I need to have clear paths and... There's stuff underneath my feet too. Yeah, that is huge. Tripping hazard in front of me here too, so. Vintage ladies perfume hat. Why is there always a clown picture where you least expect it? <laughs> Isn't that ugly? <laughs> oh my god. You know, but then somebody who who is a clown would probably go like, oh, I hope you bought that. I'd buy that from you. But I look these like look at the the dust. Like I don't know when the last time anybody was really in here. But that's the original sink. Yep. And the original toilet. Like I grew up with that, that kind of. No, you can see there's some plaster coming off the ceiling. Uh, just a few dust bunnies in here. Just a few. Just a, just a few. Take me an offer. Huh? But you know, uh, I'm gonna open up the cabinet here because old men's straight razors. Like there's a shaving brush. But uh, yeah, look, I was just talking about it. There's one right there. Old men's straight razors. I think Jim had a bunch of those. Okay, well, I'll keep looking. Um, and uh, Vintage Ladies Perfume as well is collectible. Old perfume bottles. Sure. Yeah. Oh, there's a couple more straight razors. And these are the 
non-changeable. This is type you use a strop to sharpen. I can't stand handling those things. Oh yeah. They're so blood curling and sharp. Check out that vest. Oh, I know. I've been keeping all, I've been uh, texting Louise pictures of this stuff. That's super like mod 1960s kind of. Yeah, that would have been a gentleman's vest. That's, <laughs> that's the, that's the guys. But okay, we're going to do a little exploratory. Have you gone through any of these suitcases yet? No. Oh, it's a guitar. I'm wiggling my way in here. Oh boy. I wonder if they saw, signed their uh, organ donor card. <sighs> okay, what do we have? Where do I even start? There's clothes, all sorts of vintage clothing. Everywhere. It seems like people who hoard hoard clothing. Let's see what the guitar is. Uh, Anjo. I like a nice mid-range or entry-level kind of guitar, but probably worth picking up. I'm gonna do a little walking over here. Bits of jewelry, seashell. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder what's inside some of these little boxes and pouches. Let's see. Is there anything in the, the kitty box? No, it's empty. The only thing that's not full of something. Another guitar. Doesn't really have a name on it. That looks like a little older. Maybe 1960s. Cowboy, 60s or 70s. It's got some seagulls on it. I'll set that there. Oh, the Colonel's been here. Okay. Underneath all of this is a desk. I'm just gonna check and see if there's anything. Oh, it sounded like a mouse for a second. Wouldn't surprise me if I had one jump out at me. Maybe put those out of the way. Let's see what's in the drawer. Just your usual sort of office supplies, but sometimes you can find a nice pen. Like if there's a Glacier National Park. Wouldn't it be nice to find a Mont Blanc? Or a nice high-end pen in here would be pretty cool. Alas, no luck. Close that back up. Let's see. Little novelty Kansas uh, desktop calendar. Here's the jar of pens right there. Boy, I feel like it has not been touched in a while. Mechanical pen and pencil. Mechanical pencil. Mont Blancs usually have like a little star on the top. These are probably, that one's missing some of its guts. These are uh, plated. They're all dented up. I'm not going to bother with them. It's a wax seal. There's a little horn uh, ship over there. And some statues. Might be worth saving. If I can get over there. Actually, this is just weird enough for me. Taxidermy iguana. That's cool. It's dusty. Look at this guy. <laughs> he'd probably clean up all right and there's a tiny little alligator there too a couple of them i'm gonna see if look at that organ that's sitting back there i'm gonna do some crawling around i'm gonna go put this in my pile of stuff that's of interest if i can i'm actually standing on what was a chair right now i'm gonna try and dismount oh where did my foot go oh it's a swivel chair that could have been bad 
Okay, we're gonna find a new home for this guy. I'll just set that there for now. You can just hang out there while you wait for me. And this is a little tiny room with a chair and a record player. This looks like a tiny little area where somebody would have sat and listened to music, kind of in the dark. Oh, they had a lamp. Oh, I'm working my way in. Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna sit down. Okay. All classical music. I'm sitting in the chair right now. Mid-century sort of uh, lamp next to me. Little statue. Boy, what a tiny little place to sit. I'm gonna flip this around. I've got my mask on, but I don't know if you can get an idea of the size of the room I'm in, but it's a, literally a tiny little closet. And all next to me are records everywhere. Just imagine sitting here and closing that door, you'd be kind of in your own world. Oh, I'm gonna get up now. Oh, if I can get up. Everything is so uh, tightly packed. But sadly, classical music doesn't have as much of a draw as rock and roll. So when you're looking for stuff, you're looking for uh, rock. There's some 45s. Mostly 45s are generally kind of popular music. Let's see. If you have a picture sleeve, those are a little bit better. Do night. These are quite a bit older. Johnny Horton, no record inside of it. Mad Magazine. A little promotional record. Sadly, not generally not the type of music a person's keen for. Classical. Ugh. I'm gonna back out of this closet if I can. Goodness gracious. Okay made my way out of the closet. And what do we have here? A little Mountie. Kind of a fun 50 sort of piece. Some glasses, belt buckles, some tins, lots of royal stuff. Funky 70s kind of lamp. And some paintings. Okay. What books do we have? Bibles, Encyclopedia Britannica's, Shakespeare. Okay, I'm gonna bring, uh, let's call him Iggy. Iggy the Iguana and my little Mountie here. We'll bring these guys back up to the front. Did want to get back over here. There's so much stuff everywhere. I mean, that's how this works. Okay. These wooden statues are kind of cool. I'm gonna move the pen holder out of the way. Old Pez. See, you'd think you'd put your more special stuff in the cases. Let's slide that and see if we can get a better look. Mementos from holidays, a couple little Egyptian bus. The African pieces are kind of nice. That's a little ship made out of horn. Very gently set that back down there. I like these. I don't, oh, they're... Uh, I thought they were carvings, but they're not. They're casts. So this would have been probably mass produced at some point. Mm. Neat, but not as neat as I was hoping. Can I 
found these on the back of the door. They're vintage, what my grandma would have called siwashes or knit sweaters, kind of like a jacket. These have come back in style. You know, they're handmade. People still wear them. These look like they're made probably in the 50s or 60s. And they've been at least bagged up in plastic, so they're not going to be completely filthy. So we'll set those aside. Okay, was it worth it? Part of it isn't just finding treasures for myself to buy. It's also hoping to find things of value for the uh, for the estate. So if I can find any little bits of treasure for them, I'll bring it downstairs, like the coins, or maybe there's some jewelry, who knows. These look like necklace boxes. Are they full? They are not. full of stuff. Painting. It would take ages to go through all this stuff. There's a nice little dresser back there. If I can, uh, I don't know if I'd have to climb to get to it or if there's a way to get to it or not. But there is a really nice old antique dresser back there. I think I might go around the other way though. This feels like a lost cause back here. Squeeze my way out. Oh, hang on. What's this? Jewelry boxes. Whole mess of jewelry boxes. I'm gonna go through some of these and see if any of them are full. Anytime you see something kind of hidden behind a door, it's worth investigating. Something in that one. Let's see. Well, I mean, there's stuff in here. To me, it looks mostly costume. Mind you, that's a nice, uh, that looks like an antique Sherman. That is, I think, a Sherman brooch. Maybe not. These crystals don't look fine enough. But that's good. That means there's, yeah, there's stuff in here. I wonder if every single one of these is full. Look, it's a whole, it goes all the way down to the floor. You guys see that? Some old tins. Pocket watch. Newer one. That's called a hunter case. It opens up like that on the front. But that's kind of a newer replica. Those look like um, possibly men's silver and opal uh, cufflinks. This is all men's stuff. Nice old tin with some hankies. So that's a nice little antique tin, though. Little toffee tin. More jewelry. Okay, we'll find a spot to. There's nowhere to really stage all this stuff. To, there's nowhere to put it. But normally, when you do a clear out like this, you you try and empty the whole, like one whole room, and then you can bring the stuff down to the room. I do buy old costume jewelry, if it's ornate or if it's nice enough. Some of the stuff, you know, might be desirable for someone. Holy cow, there's a lot of jewelry boxes. Sometimes some of the more precious things are kept near to the bed. Let's see, a plastic case. What's inside? Some silver, some jewelry. jewelry. Some gold rings. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put 
to know I found that stuff. I'll set it aside. Oh, what was underneath it? A little box? Or a stepping stool, maybe? Oh, just a stool. Everywhere you look, there's stuff. Kind of like a wedding ring. All sorts of ring boxes. Okay. Oh. See if I can get over to the other side. I'm gonna do a little crawling. Oh, I see a nice little uh, ashtray down there. Put my foot down. Ooh, more slippery. I'm trying to get to that little smoking stand. This is Torcher, right here. See the little, that's what I spotted right there. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get it out, and I'm gonna look for the lighter that was in it that fell off. Come on. Nice little, 40s metal craft smoking stand it's worth picking up if I can get it to stay and if I can get all the parts that I've probably dropped along the way it's the problem with working in a confined space okay let's set that there somewhere down here I dropped the Part of it. Now yeah, there's the rest of it. And you get over to this side. And there's parts of the house that probably haven't been touched in decades. <laughs> Silver dollar, 1969. Some pocket knives. Those are always fun. Little ring, ring box anyway. Let's see if anything's in it. Hair brushes, ornaments, kind of creepy looking ornaments. You guys have been back here a long time. Probably getting lonely over here. The, look, the, the it's been here so long the dust is actually crystallizing. And there's been mice, so you have to be careful what you touch. I'm gonna have to wash my hands really good. Okay. Let's see if anything's in the ring box. Nope, empty. These are uh, alabaster statues. Oh no, they're not, they're glass. They're so dusty, it looked like alabaster. Is there anything worth digging for? Oh, right, that dresser's back there somewhere. Hmm. Don't know the best way to get to it. Okay, I had to go and set my little pile of stuff that I forged out of this room. Sadly, I don't think I could get back to that uh, I don't think I can get back to the uh, dresser back there. See, there's a there's a closet there. Like, it makes you wonder, what's in the closet? Can you even peek in the door? Where's the handle? Right down here. Can I even see what's in there? A lonely little teddy bear. Okay, I'm gonna move this hat box out of the way. Nobody needs this much stuff. This is a lifetime worth of heavy shopping. It looks like it's, oh, let's see. Maybe some dishes, linens. Old uh, Hudson's Bay blankets are collectible, but I don't think I wanna 
risk my life amongst all this. <laughs> oh my goodness. I want to get try and get back to that room over there if I can. I have to carve a bit of a path. So I'm going to transfer this stuff from one problem area to another. Just so I have enough room to step over. Oh. Oh, I, I literally kicked the bucket. <laughs> okay, this is a desk. There's change. There's like, you know, we're in Canada, so that's like a dollar or two dollars. There's actual money sitting there. they've been emptied. Chester copper pot. <laughs> no, I did not find the, uh, the, the map to one-eyed Willie's treasure just yet. That one's stuck shut. Okay. okay. What's this? Complete book of sewing. Over 750 explanatory pictures. Oh, there's a comic. It'd be nice to find a good old comic book in the mix. But it's Conan, which isn't really worth a whole lot. Casper, Mad, the Black Hole. Let's attempt this. Ugh. No lights. Oh, an awful lot of 70s looking men's clothing. Can we get any brand names on this stuff? Upholstery fabric. Suit fabric. Reams of it. I mean, who's to say what's underneath all this stuff? Who are the shoes by? Made in Korea. It's not a great sign for a shoe. That looks like a beetle boot almost, with the zippers on the side. Floor shine. That's actually a half decent boot. <laughs> My dad used to wear floor shine beetle boots back in the day, you know, for somebody who collects uh, vintage clothing. It's kind of neat. Okay, I'm gonna crawl over the pile of shoes. I have no idea where my feet are going right now. Something you don't want to have fall in your noggin. Yeah, it's not a good sign. Value Village. Means you weren't really uh, shopping off the rack for your stuff, but more comics, Looney Tunes. Incredibles, that's not that old. Buried back here. Rolls of coins. 1939 to 60. Okay, I'm gonna bring these down. I'll show him. Oh, there's a stack of comic books. All it takes is one good old one in the mix to make it all worthwhile. These all look like they're fairly new. Because I don't think it was a kid up here. I think it was an I think it was an adult buying comics. They didn't have kids. Come on, Spider-Man number one. Nope. Let's see what made it into the dresser drawer. This is all fabric on the, on the ground.
photo albums. A quarter, 73 US quarter. Another one down in there. Okay, found these and then I found a whole bag full of money. Silver dollars, coin sets. Photo albums. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down. There's always some money hidden around a house like this. Lord. What's in the closet? It'll take days to get to that thing. I'm gonna wiggle my way out. There's still a basement to go look through. I put some of these coins together. Now the fun part, the kitchen. This is usually where all the gross stuff is. You can see the stove has not been used in a while. I don't think anything has been used in a while. Cupboards are still full. Some big giant teacups. The ornaments. But this is the original kitchen to the house. Like nothing in here has been ever changed. I mean, we're original sink, original counters. If you're trying to replicate a 1950s or 40s kitchen, this is pretty well it. Look at the old Frigidaire fridge still working away. Okay. Sewing notions, sewing machines. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're gonna have a look down in the basement next. If we dare. Light, make sure the lights are all on. Down we go. Into the dungeon. And there are just a pile of clothes and shoes and purses. Now, well, that's interesting. That box is marked Louis V, as in Louis Vuitton. I'm going to see if I can wiggle my way down there but before I do it goes on and on and on and on bags full of pillbox hats trunks and shoes and coats and accessories okay where do you even start I'll see if I can let me know if I can get back through there I might have to literally go through I might have to go through the wardrobe like the line which in the wardrobe I might have to carve a path through this thing Okay, Jack, it's very special. There's almost a little crawling path in here. This is the box I'm curious to look at. Designer. inside made in Greece okay I'm gonna try and get this box out and have a look in it made in Brazil oh there we go is it real though is the question there's several of them back here They're kind of crusty feeling vintage Louis Vuitton 
Yeah, I'm gonna dig this out because that's worth bringing out. These are the most replicated purses that you can possibly find, but worth a good second look anyway. There's quite a few of them in there. So I'll we'll leave those to browse at. Some of these other bar boxes were marked high-end and so forth as well, so I might be doing a little digging. Oh, actually, I'm crawling in. And then, let's see. Jacket, special, floral, crochet. See, purses are kind of a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. So if you find a nice old purse, there might be uh, multiple buyer buyers on it. Now, this is all blue. I wonder if it's coordinated, coordinated by blue. Fendi. Designer. Shoes and purses, Fendi. Okay. There's a whole shelving system back there, too. Oh, I fell into a sinkhole. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we got. This box has water damage to it, but it is marked Fendi, high-end brand. Gucci. Yeah, this might be another one I have to bring out. See, then the shoes in here are made in Vietnam, but yet the purse claims or says it's a Gucci. You know, frankly, feeling it, the quality doesn't feel like what you'd expect from a high-end purse. I'm going to fathom a guess that they're replica, but I am going to bring it out. So I'd be interested in having a better look at. And then there's one here I've set aside. Oh, yeah. Is, I think that I'm going to Yeah. They don't, uh, they don't feel like they're the right quality. They're kind of crunchy. But I am going to see if I can work my way back. There's a whole uh, shelving system back there with little doors. So I'm going to tunnel my way like a little uh, field mouse here. And see if I can uh, get over to the other side. There's an awful lot of, uh, I mean, more clothes than you'd ever need in one's life. Oh. <sighs> trick is trying to find stable ground to wiggle across because there might be something that's not closed over there but you know some interesting stuff okay made it more clothes and some knickknacks silverware maybe Floral. This is all clothing down here. And I am deep in it. Okay. Oh boy, I'm stuck back here. Get myself out. <laughs> now to dig my way out. This is definitely not a job if you're uh, claustrophobic. There are just, you know, bins and boxes and more than I could go through today in one day. It's just mounded everywhere. Yeah. It's an old treadle sewing machine hidden in the basement full of buttons. Look at all the buttons in here. Another ashtray jean jacket old denim can actually be valuable same with old motorcycle jackets you can find one of those fairly new drill press back there ironing board like how would you even get that back there that thing's probably only a few years old and yet it's down here and let's see tools
lots and lots of tools. Remote control for a Meccano set, oddly. Some board games. This might have to be another trip. This is probably more than one person could possibly look at in one day, you know? Oh, looks like a little baseball glove. It has a fairly old baseball mitt, catcher's mitt. Okay, I think it's time for me to retreat back upstairs. Look, there's Archie fabric. But I'm going to uh, get myself up near the exit. So that's it after what was, uh, boy, two and a half hours of digging through that house. I only scratched the surface, but I found bags of coins, rings, jewelry, possibly some designer purses, and I was able to buy most of that stuff. Um, so I'll probably go back there and do a second round at some point if the, uh, the owner of the property lets me come back and uh, do a visit. But, you know, man, that's a lot of stuff. And uh, for those of you that know me from my other series, when I did the Potter's House series, that's how it started for me at that place too. And there was all sorts of buried pottery and treasures. Um, so did I offer to buy this house? Actually, yes. But the sad thing is right now, uh, well, not sad, I'm trying to stay on budget and uh, not get into the debt too much. So I was good, I didn't buy the place, but I sure thought about it. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's episode. Uh, really appreciate you tuning into these videos. Um, subscribe if you haven't already for more adventures and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.